Hey, what's up, guys? Fox 32 entertainment reporter Jake Hamilton here. Welcome to the Emmy After Party. It is literally 10, 10 p.m. And we just finished watching the 75th annual Primetime Emmy Awards right here on Fox 32. And I got to tell you, I, you know, maybe it's just because the Golden Globes are just a couple of days ago and they were just so truly horrible. But I honestly believe that this was not just one of the best and well-produced award shows in a long time. I think it's one of the best Emmys, if not the single best Emmy award show I think I've ever seen in my life. What most worked about this show is that it was such a love letter to television and the impact that television has on us. TV gave me my first crush. I love you, Tootie. And the fact that tonight's Emmys were a love letter to television leads me perfectly into what worked and what didn't work for the Emmys tonight. What I what I really dislike about award shows over these past few years is that they don't seem to like the thing that they're giving out awards for. They spend the first half hour making fun of the movies that they're honoring, making fun of the TV shows that they're there for. And so that's why I really love this show as a whole is that it was a tribute, whether it was bringing out, uh, you know, the the cast of, uh, of All in the Family, whether it was bringing out the Grey's Anatomy cast, even something as as cool as like Peter Dinklage walking out to the Game of Thrones music to, to award best drama. Hello, you room full of hotties. Uh, let's talk about those cast reunions, whether it was just a couple of people, maybe it was a majority of the cast. Uh, you know, seeing the entire cast of Martin back there laughing about not getting Emmys. Psst. Hey, yo, what? I'm saying they forgot to say our names, man. Seeing the cast of Ally McBeal recreating their iconic bathroom dance sequence. Honestly, seeing the cast of Cheers pour a, a beer at the bar. I mean, that th these are moments that individually I never thought we would ever get again. The fact that we all got them so rapid fire one after the other, I feel like it's almost gonna take a moment to kind of appreciate what the producers of tonight's broadcast pulled off because it had just one of those things happened, we would be talking about that all day tomorrow. But the fact that it was one amazing historic cast after the other, I feel like we're kind of sleeping on how big of a, an achievement tonight's show was and it would feel weird for the emmys to give themselves an emmy next year but i kind of feel like they should I, uh the speeches i thought were really strong don't pick don't don't pick it up i, I couldn't do the button uh i wasted all my time hugging everybody i love you all so much um and so one of the reasons why a lot of times when someone would get up to speak they would have what is called sort of a lower third and the lower third it would say you know Kieran Culkin would wish to thank, and then there would be a list of maybe 30 people. So it gave winners the opportunity to maybe give a little bit more of a heartfelt speech uh, that maybe had something to say rather than just listing out 30 names and then saying, okay, thanks and walking off the stage. When I first moved to LA, my uh, bank account went to the negative by 63 cents. Uh, so I had to deposit a dollar bill into my account to avoid the overdraft fee. And the ATM screen said, are you sure you want to deposit $1? And I was like, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure of anything back then. Um, they were sort of able to have their cake and eat it too. And that was a really, really smart idea by the show producers that I'm amazed no one has thought of up to this point. I would not be surprised if other award shows follow suit. That being said, it was a three hour broadcast. Uh, so that inevitably means that there are going to be some things that just didn't work. And, and, and the first one I kind of want to throw out there was, I think it was a good idea on paper. And even when they presented the idea, I thought, oh, that's funny. And what I'm talking about is Anthony Anderson's mother being the uh, quote unquote rap music. But they weren't going to do rap music from an orchestra. They were going to have Anthony Anderson's mother step up from the audience and scream at you to wrap up your speech. Now, when you see my mama coming, just thank Jesus and your family and wrap it up. And I don't want nobody to get disrespectful with my mama because my mama is from the west side of Chicago and she can throw them hands. Shut up. That's enough. Mama, I want to go to the after party. Oh, Hurry up. Okay, my mama. But it wasn't until it was put into practice that it felt like I realized and 
the producers realized, oh, this is not a good idea. Jennifer Coolidge, who won Best Supporting Actress for The White Lotus, was in the middle of a really nice, passionate, heartfelt speech. I want to thank all the evil gays. You know, I just really, really, I just... And then they proceeded to do the Anthony Anderson's Mom Interrupts You. And you could tell Jennifer was sort of thrown off and the vibe just wasn't right. It felt really rude. And like, that was kind of her moment. And it was sort of being interrupted by this bit. I know, I'm getting wrapped it up. Okay, yes, okay. Baby. And, um, yes, and um, I, I just- I love you, baby, but time. Okay, guess what? Guess what, one more thing. I love, I love you too. You. I just want to say one thing. Okay, um, okay. one, one thing. last And so I'm um, glad that the Emmy producers do what a good producer does, which is read the moment, read the room, realize, hey, we tried a bit, it didn't work, and uh, let's let's move on. In fact, John Oliver later in the show won his speech and and tried to keep going on long enough to get Anthony Anderson's mom to to interrupt him. I am not leaving without getting played off by Anthony Anderson's mom, so I'm going to start reading off the names of the Liverpool football team in goal: Alison Becker. Then you got Trent Alexander Arnold. You could tell that, that she was hesitant to do so, I'm assuming because the conversation had been had that, that they weren't going to do it anymore. The other the other moment that, that's a little bit of a head scratcher, uh, which, which is a shame, is uh, actor Paul Walter Hauser, who won uh, Best Supporting Actor like in a limited series for uh, a limited series called Blackbird. Now here's, here's what I can tell you. One, he deserved that Emmy. If you saw his performance in Blackbird, you know that there's a reason he's won not just the Emmy, but countless other awards for that performance as well. It's an unbelievable performance. He plays a serial killer in jail, but he was doing some bit where like, when they announced the the nominees, he was like eating something and had like orange food residue all over his hand. And then when they announced that he was the winner, he like kind of awkwardly gave everyone like handshakes and high fives and then continued to chew as he then wrapped his acceptance speech. Uh, thank you to the voters in the TV Academy. Thank you, mom and dad, you nurtured what I had in me. Dennis Lehane, Taryn Edgerton, their talent can move boulders. If I look tall, it's cause I'm standing on both of their shoulders. And I kept kind of waiting for like the food bit to make sense or, 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 or come around. Here's what I can tell you. I know that um, Paul Walter Hauser is a big wrestling fan. He apparently name dropped several wrestlers in his speech. So a lot of people are saying that he used his acceptance speech to do some sort of a wrestling bit where he's going to be trying to get into the ring and maybe and maybe that's like going to have something to do with like his intro or something. I'm not sure that that moment uh, played as well, but in a night full of really amazing speeches and great moments, the 75th annual Primetime Emmy Awards uh, it's it's an award show that changes network like the Super Bowl every year. Um, I feel sorry for whoever, whichever network has it next year, whichever network has the 76th, because you're going to have a hard time beating uh, what Fox just pulled off tonight. It was an incredible example of just how good and entertaining an award show can be. Until then, I'm Fox 32 Entertainment reporter Jake Hamilton. I'll see you soon.